Welcome, everyone. I'm Gorilla Monsoon, host of the Highly Unlikely podcast. We have an amazing lineup on today's show. None other than the Hulkster here to share his thoughts on the inaugural extravaganza that started it all off the very first WrestleMania. It's gonna be a happening. So without any further ado, please welcome my guest at this time, ladies and gentlemen, the immortal Hulk Hogan. I am a real American. Fight for the rights of everyone. Hulkster, welcome to the podcast. Might I say you're looking terrific. Well, you know something, Gorilla Monsoon. I'm feeling great, brother. You sound it. You sound it. Well, there's only so much of that exaggerated voice I can do these days, man. So you'll probably hear me more at my normal voice going forward. That's not a problem with me, and I'm sure for our fine listeners out there in podcast land. Excellent. Let's get this started, brother. I'm pumped. So let's start at the very beginning, the event that started it all. Hulkster, what are some of your memories of this extraordinary event? So you'll notice there's a part of the match when I get knocked to the outside of the ring, you know, when Piper nearly broke my back with a steel chair shot. Huh. And Muhammad Ali came over to help me up. But as I got to my feet, and this wasn't shown on camera, he began tapping me on the shoulder and challenged me to a shoot right there in the middle of the match. Highly unlikely. That never happened. I wasn't concerned. I wasn't scared, brother. You know, I'd learned many shoot holds from Vernagon back in my AWA days. That Bush League. You know, to protect myself. And I was already doing my own version of MMA on the side to help break in all the younger guys. What? So I knew that if it came to it, if I had to shoot, then brother, I had to shoot. What? Are you out of your mind? Do you even know what MMA stands for? Yeah, brother. Mixed martial action. No, it's mixed martial arts. Close enough. I've got news for you. As Mean Gene would say, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So anyway, Ali thankfully kept his ego in line and we were able to complete the match. He counted the pin as I was covering Orndorff. Ali did not make the count. It was Pat Patterson. Who? Pat Patterson. Doesn't register, man. He won the very first Intercontinental title in a tournament held in Rio de Janeiro. I'll let you have that one, but on to the after party. Picture this, brother. Myself, Vince Jr., Albano. Oh, boy, I know where this is going. Billy Martin, Andre, Mean Gene. A close personal friend. And Matt Bourne, you know, the evil clown dude. Yeah, I know him. What a piece of work. We're all at the bar, you know, hanging and banging, downing a few beers. Or in Andre's case, ten barrels of wine. You got it, brother. So all this is happening, and then in the corner of my eye, I see Liberace sitting by the piano. Really? I kid you not, brother. So I thought, wow. When am I ever going to get this opportunity again? So we got talking about things, you know, music, sex, fashion. Fashion? That's right, brother. The only fashion you knew was being associated with classy Freddie Blassie, and he took your career right down the toilet. Drugs, the gay community. The gay what? And I dropped in that I used to be in a band. Ruckus, I believe. Yeah, Ruckus, but that not only could I play bass, but I could also play keyboard. Keyboard? Are you serious? Occasionally the maracas. Ha! But that didn't really fit the style of our songs. No kidding. So after a few more drinks and white lines, man... Probably mean jeans. Myself and Liberace started jamming together on the piano. You did not. And man, it was hotter than Springsteen in that bar, you know. Stop! As you like to say, brother, they were hanging from the rafters. Don't believe him, folks. Vinnie Mac got on stage and started singing like he was Elton John, man. It was wild. And can anyone corroborate this story of yours? Yeah, brother. We were getting so much attention that a few celebrities dropped by... One of them, a good, close, personal friend of mine, the actor John Belushi. Stop right there. That did not happen. As God is my witness, he was there, man. There is no possible way he was there. He was definitely there, dude, because he took this cigarette. No, he can't have been there because he was dead. Dead, brother? He'd been dead for three years. Are you sure? Yes. Well, anyway, brother, the point I was making... Finally a point! ...was that... Liberace was so impressed with how I was working the room that he offered me support for his next concert. Do you hear the words that you are saying? But you know, brother, I had to graciously decline his offer. No, you didn't. Because I was double booked that night. No, you weren't. I was in a tag at the Spectrum with the Ariba Man. I think we were up against Bundy and Killer Khan in a double juice cage or something. I can assure our listeners that such a match did not happen. Dude, it happened. Firstly, Killer Khan was not in the World Wrestling Federation at the time. Secondly, President Jack Tunney would never have sanctioned such a match. But anyway, man, after the match, he called me up and gave me a beautiful rendition of Ave Maria over the telephone. Will you stop? And other than the time I voluntarily laid down for Hellwig at the Sky Dome and that time that Miss Elizabeth got squished by the big bad Akeem. It was not Akeem. It was the only time that I've cried. That's it. We're done. Uh, folks, I apologize that you had to sit through that garbage with our esteemed guest. Hopefully he'll keep the BS down to a minimum later on. But for now, we're going to take a short break. In the meantime, here's a number from Jacques and Raymond. The fabulous Rujos. Folks, we'll be back in a short, short. <laughs> 